Hey, how is it going guys? Robin here on Chips Media. In this video, we're gonna take a look at Arctic's latest and probably also cheapest cooling solution for the AM4 platform. It's called Alpine AM4 Passive. And as the name hints, it's completely silent and it costs you $12.99. Is it any good? Yes, it's pretty spectacular. More on that in a second. Now, who is Arctic? They probably don't need any introduction, but in case you forgot they've been around since 2001 back then they focused solely on cooling performance at an affordable price many of you probably remember the third party gpu cooler now it wasn't until 2010 they became arctic and since then they now also focus on a whole set of innovative peripherals and sound products as well as monitor arms etc now huge thanks to the guys at arctic for sending me their latest cooler for the amp for. Guys, let me present to you the Alpine Arctic's first ever completely silent CPU cooler for the AM4 and the AM4 socket. By the way, they are also selling a similar model for the Intel socket as well. It's called the Alpine 11, though that one is a little bit smaller. Now, why would you want to go with a solution like this? What are the main benefits? Well, first and foremost, there are no moving parts and it's completely silent there's no maintenance needed so no fans to get cluttered with dust or anything and it's very cheap and it doesn't take up much more space than a stock cooler making it ideal in small narrow pc builds now thanks to the all new Ryzen lineup by AMD, they have finally given us a chance to build some really powerful gaming PCs and servers with tons of cores and threads without having to spend a fortune. Now what makes the Ryzen processor even more exciting is the fact that they, they're not running very hot in stock clock, much thanks to the power efficient Zen architecture and Soldred IHS, my 1700 with 8 cores and 16 threads for example never surpasses 40 degrees under normal workload with the stock cooler and yeah that kind of raises the question i really wanted an answer to this would it be possible to run a high-end system like the 1700 a cpu with a tdp of 65 watts completely silent in this video guys we're gonna try this rather sweet looking puppy on a full-fledged eight core cpu yeah that's right now i gotta say guys this is a little bit unfair to the alpine because arctic is aiming this cooler towards ultra low power cpus like the ryzen 2400ge for example and guys don't worry i am gonna be using the alpine heatsink on the upcoming xbox killer pc build coming out pretty soon with a Ryzen 2400 GE which by the way has a TDP of a more reasonable 35 watts anyway here are some specs on the cooler we're looking at the 100% aluminum heat sink with a brushed black finish that according to Arctic should improve heat dissipation I gotta say guys it looks very good according to Arctic it's the micro porosity resulting from the heatsink surface treatment that optimizes the heat exchange between the aluminum and the surrounding air and this should greatly improve the cooling performance in passive mode it has a specified maximum tdp of 48 watts more on that in a moment it comes pre-applied with the mx2 thermal paste right out of the box the alpine measures in at 99 millimeter in length 99 millimeters in width and 70 millimeters in height and it weights 557 grams and on compatibility we find am4 as the supported platform and putting it side by side with the amd stock cooler they pretty much the same in size but let's do the unboxing first shall we inside the box we find the cooler of course we got four screws four springs four washers and a manual car to Arctic's website where you can simply download 
the manual. Now we need a quick way to determine the temperatures so that we don't run the system too hot. I'm gonna be using a software called HW Monitor which is built to report various parameters in your system. I'm also gonna be using the onboard Q code display for temp readings while in game. Now we got a few things we need to address right away. This isn't the CPU cooler for a full-fledged CPU like the Ryzen 1700. My main goal is to have this cooler in the upcoming Xbox Killer PC build with the Ryzen 2400GE which we're planning to start building within the next upcoming days. Now since I don't have all the parts for the build ready yet, in this video we're gonna try and see if it actually can handle the Ryzen 1700. This is gonna be a challenge but looking at this beast of a heatsink this is, I'm having great confidence. This might just handle the 1700 even if we have to play around with the voltage just by a little. Alright, secondly, what does TDP mean? Well, TDP stands for Thermal Design Power and this is the number that the manufacturer uses to specify their product. Intel and AMD measures this a little bit differently but it basically tells how much heat in terms of what the CPU will generate and hence how much heat in what the cooler needs to be able to handle in order to keep uh, the cooler within reasonable temperature temperatures and not run too hot. Arctic Alpine is mainly meant for CPUs with the TDP of just 48 watts but as I said we're gonna try it on the Ryzen 1700 with a TDP of 65 watts just to find out if it's actually possible and to be able to reach this bald achievement we need good cooling. In fact we're gonna be needing great cooling, therefore we're gonna be using the Corsair Crystal 460X RGB with three 120mm fans in the front running in 1400 RPM with a maximum airflow of 52 CFM each. On the back we're gonna be using a 120mm fan from, uh, I don't know how to pronounce their name, but they call the series the Gentle Typhoon lineup and it has a max RPM of 1450 with airflow of 50 CFM. Hopefully this will be enough to run this system with a completely fanless CPU cooler. Now that would be one hell of an achievement. Remember the Ryzen 1700 is an 8 core 16 thread CPU and it's far from an ultra low power budget CPU. Now by default Rock Crosser 6 from Asus likes to go pretty high on voltage. According to AMD Ryzen processors do not use pre-programmed VID tables therefore there is no fixed V core when the CPU runs in the out of the box condition. The default V core will vary depending on workload with a maximum V core of 1.5 375 which is pretty high. We don't need one 375 volts to run the CPU in stock clocks. Remember volt is strongly correlated with temperatures. Our main goal is to run the Alpine in reasonable temperatures and with voltage running this high this might cause some trouble since remember it's just a fanless heat sink. In the end of the day you can't fool the physics right. What are reasonable temps then? Well according to AMD anything below 95 celsius is said to be safe temps if you want to stay out of degrading and thermal throttling however i wouldn't go over 85 c simply because you're basically dealing with very hot air and at this point puts a lot of demands on your airflow in your case and it might just cause some other related components to throttle such as the graphics card for example simply put you don't want to go near the 95 c limit even if it's considered to be totally okay. Now because I'm just so interested to find out how Alpine can handle a Ryzen 1700, let's just leave the default settings as it is and see what happens. Here how this is gonna go down. Let's start by running the system with factory stock settings at first and see what temps we're getting. If we're running too hot then let's scale back on the voltage to the recommended volt settings rather than using a 
Jesus default settings, which are clearly running higher than what's necessary, to be frank. Taking a look at the documentation, you can place it in two directions, according to Arctic, to get the best possible results, we want to place the heatsink in a horizontal way to help push the heat out of the case. The assembly is pretty simple, we need to take off the pre-install AM4 bracket and the backplate whoever. The Asus Crosshair 6 comes with double-sided adhesive tape in between the board and the backplate. Now in order to make it come off more easily, heating it up a little will help you lose the glue without being worried of damaging the board. A hairdryer is perfect for this, we should be able to get it loose rather easily. Now this is a clear evidence of a guy that's been using way too much thermal compound. See what happens when you go bananas guys? Jesus! Time to flip the case around to get a hold of the AM4 bracket. Thanks to the cutout on the back of the case, we're actually able to take off the AM4 bracket without having to take the motherboard out completely. Now time to fire up the system, we got 1, 2, 3, 4 fans in total, let's see if it's enough. Now system started up nicely right into BIOS, we can see that we're actually running on a reasonable temperature of 46 Celsius, let's fast forward into Windows, shall we? Alright, so temps seems more than reasonable, let's fire up. Cinebench and give the CPU a chance to sweat a bit. Interesting, still not a high. Let's jump into CSGO and find out if we're seeing any frame drops or anything. Alright, so it doesn't seem to be any noticeable drops in frames. And after been playing for a while, I went back into Windows to find out that we haven't seen higher temperatures than the 60 degree mark. Now it's time to give the CPU a real challenge by starting a 1080p 60fps rendering process. Now with the CPU close to 100% utilization it's clear with temperatures over the 80 celsius mark we finally hit the limit now this was expected since Asus like to give the CPU more vault than actually needed. I wonder what happens if we scale back on the vault just by a little. Let's say one vault blank. Would the cooler be able to handle the heat? Well, challenge accepted. I went ahead and downloaded a software called Sand State made by Elmore. By using something called P State, you can overclock or on the clock and even set the exact voltage on your CPU instantly without having to go through the shenanigan in BIOS. Now, after some trial and error, I finally landed on a slight overclock. I was also able to drop the vault by around 200 millivolts. Now let's run some tests, some benchmarks and see if it's stable. Now here are the results guys. We got the Wrath Spire, the stock cooler for AMD and the Arctic Freezer 33 Esports 1. Same settings has been used on all three coolers. Now after been stress testing in software such as Cinebench, Prime 95, video rendering and various games. I couldn't get the CPU higher than 78 degrees after hours of stress testing. Now a few things to have in mind. Yes, we do have four 120mm fans running, so it is not entirely quiet, but I'm still stoked at the result. This is a pretty small case. I'm running a system with dual graphics cards and yeah, it's summer and it's around 25-26 degrees in my studio as well. Something to have in mind. With that said, however, I was blown away how silent the PC actually got as soon as we got rid of the fan. Again, this particular PC build scenario is a little bit unusual. The perfect build would have been a smaller form factor, where a big CPU cooler would have been a problem, and where you want to go completely silent. For anyone that care about noise and want a quiet, budget friendly, and power efficient alternative. The Alpine is definitely the way to go. By a little bit of undervolting of the CPU, you can actually run the Ryzen 1700, a 8 core 16 thread CPU completely silent for 12 bucks. If your goal is to run this with anything less than 8 cores, I wouldn't be surprised if you had to touch the volts at all. By the way, guys, I'm planning to build an Xbox killer PC. I think this CPU cooler will fit just perfectly for the smaller build. I cannot wait to show you guys everything in details. Now let me know how much would you spend on a third party CPU cooler. Once again, thanks Arctic for the continued support. Until next time guys, have an awesome day alright? Bye!